only loved them, but I saw right through their act. They thought they were so great because they had the whole sun and moon thing going. They'd learn I was not only the wrong pony to push around, but I would be so much more. We're going to need another master code. Objection! Okay, so I'll talk about chapter four more in depth later. For now, I had to discuss what is quite possibly the most insane part of the latest release. When I was growing up in Skyros, they were the golden ponies, the favorites. Every pony loved them, but I saw right through their act. They thought they were so great because they had the whole sun and moon thing going. What have you done? You changed the future. Created a time paradox. Oh dear sweet Celestia, where does one even begin? So apparently Opaline is thousands of years old at least, since we don't know officially how long G5 takes place after the last problem. And not only that, she directly grew up alongside Luna and Celestia in a city called Skyros. Just the idea that the G5 writers are going forward on this is simply baffling. Now this Skyros suddenly existed ages ago. Okay, I'll bite. Where was Skyros in terms of ancient Equestria? How many alicorns were there? Was this Skyros perhaps a city of alicorns? In the Mainscarade Ball episode, Misty does discover an old book called The Alicorns of the Ancient World. And it's a big book, so either it's an entire history of the alicorns we know from G4, or it's possible further evidence that this Skyros was an alicorn city. But that's all speculation. And what happened to the city? Opaline's a fire alicorn, so were there different elements? Whatever happened to Luna and Celestia's parents? Opaline's parents? How come either of the royal sisters never mentioned this other fire alicorn to Twilight or her friends? Why am I upside down? Ugh. It just raises too many questions. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like it whenever G5 or any show expands upon its lore, makes the world a much more interesting and dynamic place with new history and elements to learn about. But again, this? This is absolutely <laughs> ludicrous to make a major plot point that Opaly knew Luna and Celestia. Not only that, but the royal sisters were apparently uppity and thought of themselves above every pony else, essentially seeing Opaly as a low commoner. This just hurts the Royal Sisters characters in so many ways I can't even start. In the comics, we did see Luna and Celestia fight with one another, but it felt like a realistic sibling squabble between the two. Here, it just portrays them as jerks. Now, while Opaline is telling her backstory, it does feel like a genuine retelling of past events. Uh, sort of. Setting up her wanting to prove herself any way possible, even ruling over all non alicorn beings. But okay, similar to the false story that she told Misty about Twilight taking all of Equestria's magic for herself, it's possible that once again she manufactured the tale of the princesses as jerks, rather being the other way around with her just being jealous of their power. Okay, fine. But that still doesn't answer the numerous plot holes that this scenario brings up. Like, why did she wait thousands of years to declare her campaign for Alicorns to rule over all others? Long after Luna was redeemed and Twilight became princess, she had a prime opportunity with Luna gone when she was banished to the moon, and Celestia was the only obstacle for control of the throne. Sure, Nightmare Moon would eventually be released, but otherwise she could have just attacked Celestia during her solo rule when there were less Alicorns around, and take out the evil moon princess upon her inevitable return. But no, she waits all these moons in her castle, I guess planning, and for some reason she enacts her plan after Twilight takes the throne, and even though they are technically retired, Luna and Celestia are still around, so to reiterate, she decided to carry out her master plan when at least three or four alicorns walked Equestria instead of one. Truly, Opaline is a tactical genius that will be heralded for years to come. You magnificent bastard, I read your book!
Oh, and also, Opaline grew up in a time when these Unity Crystals didn't exist, and magic itself existed in normalcy across Equestria. So therefore, theoretically, like the Royal Sisters, she would have minimal limits to her magic. And we can assume her fire powers improved dramatically over the thousand year span, so it's possible she could have raised Equestria with her fire, either to eventually take over the throne, or just to destroy the entire land. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Now granted, Luna and Celestia may have been powerful enough to stop her on their own, but we don't know the full range of Opaline's power, so that debate's still up in the air. Regardless, this is probably the dumbest plot point to come out of Chapter 4. I cannot believe this was even greenlit. <sighs> but anyway, that's all for this topic. Stay tuned for more Chapter 4 content coming soon. Well, that's it for today, guys. Until next time, MC out! <laughs>